From WNEP, the news station, this is 2024, a look back. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Lewan. This year, a total solar eclipse graced America's skies. On April 8th, we had a perfect celestial alignment of the sun, moon, and earth. The eclipse passed through 15 states, but all 50 states saw at least a partial eclipse. In addition to being a meteorologist, I am also a NASA partner eclipse ambassador. I spent a great deal of time educating and preparing everyone here in our area. I also wanted to bring a unique perspective to you at home by covering the eclipse on board an eclipse cruise. Tonight, we'll revisit some of the biggest moments leading up to, during, and even after the 2024 total solar eclipse. Observatories across northeastern and central Pennsylvania welcomed hundreds of visitors for the eclipse. In Lackawanna County, Keystone College planned an event at the Thomas G. Cupolari Observatory, complete with several telescopes with solar filters for safe eclipse viewing. In Snyder County, libraries were ready with eclipse glasses and educational materials. And in Luzerne County, Penn State Wilkesbury planned a solar eclipse viewing party. We have a walking science fair where with different stations for people to go to and, and learn about the eclipse and have interactive displays. Newswatch 16's Nikki Cries stopped in Erie for the eclipse, the only major city in Pennsylvania in the path of totality. She shows us the preparations. Everywhere you look in downtown Erie, there are signs of the upcoming solar eclipse. Erie is in the path of totality, which is the area where the moon will fully block out the sun. Pennsylvania's population is expected to grow by nearly 200,000 people to watch the eclipse. They're treating this like a weather emergency because we've never seen crowds of this magnitude. Chris Temple is the director of communications for Visit Erie. She says the city has been preparing for this for more than year. Realistically, we know those numbers are going to be coming north to our shores to see totality. We're the only major city in Pennsylvania in totality. Frank and Marilyn Szymanski are here from Hanover Township. We had to make our reservations over a year ago. Um, we looked into it, found out what we needed to do and drove the longest we've ever driven in 25 years to get here. It took us six hours. Frank planned this a year ago. Um, it was something that we would never expect to do, and we didn't think in 20 more in 20 years we, we, we will see this again. What could be more fabulous than an, an eclipse for an optometrist <laughs> in the eye world? Dr. Janine Watkins is an optometrist from Port Carbon. She's here for the Pennsylvania Optometric Association Conference. It's not a coincidence. It's just a beautiful event. You know, for thousands of years, we've all looked forward to this as humanity. So I, I think it's it's beautiful. And I, I come from six hours away. Nikki Cries, Newswatch 16, Erie County. Cities in the path of totality saw different lengths of darkness on board the eclipse cruise off of the coast of Mazatlan, Mexico. We saw four minutes and 26 seconds of totality. That's just two seconds shy of the maximum duration along the eclipse path. For comparison, Syracuse spent one minute and 27 seconds in darkness. Rochester, Erie and Buffalo experienced totality for about three minutes and 40 seconds. Those in the path of totality had a chance to catch a glimpse of something rare, the sun's outer atmosphere, also known as the corona. The sun's outer atmosphere, or corona, is elusive. It is almost always hidden by the sun's bright surface. It's a very different kind of thing than you ever see anywhere else in nature. Scientists still don't understand it. Scientists have been struggling for decades to try to understand how does the sun's upper atmosphere get heated to millions of degrees by a surface that's only 10,000 degrees? Now, that's very counterintuitive. If you put your hand near a fire, it's very hot, and as you pull your hand away, it gets cooler. Although the corona is hundreds of times hotter than the surface of the sun, it is also millions of times less dense, causing it to appear extremely dim. So we only get the chance to see the corona, even though it's always there. We only get to see it during a total solar eclipse. For the mere seconds it is visible, it is breathtaking. Oh my God! It's spectacularly gorgeous. Um, it has loops and streamers and wisps and whorls. These are all sculpted by the sun's magnetic field. You may hear that eclipses are rare or once in a lifetime events, but is that true? I spoke with an expert to find out how often eclipses really happen. 
There are at least two solar eclipses and two lunar eclipses every year. And as far as total solar eclipses... Total solar eclipse occurs on average every 18 months. If you uh, are willing to travel to see them, you could see one every year or two. Oftentimes you may hear eclipses are rare or unusual phenomena. What's rare, especially for a solar eclipse, is to have one in any particular spot. Over 70% of the Earth is covered in water. Most of the time, total solar eclipse paths cross wide swaths of ocean and unpopulated areas on land. If you were to stay in one place and wait for a total solar eclipse to come to you, you'd have to wait on average three to 400 years. So in that sense, a total solar eclipse is rare because it rarely comes to where you live. But a total solar eclipse occurring somewhere on Earth is not rare at all. It's not often that total solar eclipses cut through the United States and include big cities on the eclipse path. The 2017 eclipse uh, that crossed the country from coast to coast went over a lot of relatively sparsely populated areas and very few big cities. So there were maybe 12 million people who lived in the path of totality. This time, more than 30 million people live within the path of totality. And it's estimated, I've seen estimates of anywhere from 4 to 10 million people who are going to travel into the path. So that's 40 million people seeing the total eclipse, but the entire population of North America will have at least a partial eclipse. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, half a billion people. I think that this will be certainly the most watched uh, total solar eclipse in the Western Hemisphere. When watching an eclipse, it's important to preserve your vision. Coming up on Newswatch 16, we'll explain how to safely view an eclipse and some of the technology used to protect your eyes. Plus, we head back to Erie to experience totality. We'll take you there when we return. Of course, when staring at the sun, protective eyewear is essential. Eclipse glasses need to be worn at all times unless the moon is completely covering the sun. But you can't just grab your sunglasses. You have to use ISO certified eclipse glasses. Those only allow one one millionth of the light from the sun to come through. Otherwise, you could cause permanent eye damage, including blindness. If stored in a cool, dry place, eclipse glasses produced after 2015 can last forever. Have any eclipse glasses lying around your house? While the glasses won't go bad, you might not have a use for them anymore. Instead of tossing them in the trash, you can donate your glasses so someone else can safely view an eclipse. Check your glasses first for any scratches or bends. Right now in northeastern and central Pennsylvania, you can take them to the Tunkhannock Public Library or the North Central Pennsylvania Conservancy in Williamsport. For updated drop-off locations, visit astronomerswithoutborders.org. You might be wondering if blind people can experience an eclipse, and they can. This is how. These are thermoform tactile cards sent to me by NASA. The cards help visually impaired and blind people feel what a corona looks like. They can also be useful for sighted individuals to understand the shapes of the sun's outer atmosphere. I shared these cards earlier this year with members of the Lackawanna Blind Association. Did you know some of the technology used to safely view an eclipse came from right in the Poconos? Newswatch 16's Emily Kress spoke with a woman whose dad created the Spun Spotter. Born and raised in Hawley, Daniel Janicek had a creative mind and hands ready to work. His daughter Diane grew up watching her dad put that creativity into motion. He also was very much interested in science and physics and astronomy. And that was kind of what led him down the path of thinking about how to how to view the sun, which he was obsessed with, in a safe way. In her childhood home, her dad built a prototype of the Sun Spotter solar viewing device. It uses mirrors and filtered lenses to allow people to see the sun without looking straight at it. A piece of technology that changed the way people view solar eclipses. It's a sense of pride for our family to know that my father's invention that was made with rudimentary materials that he had acquired from Sherman's mill, for example, the old silk mill back in the 1970s. He used to work there as a janitor. He would acquire these rudimentary pieces and he put together this telescope that is now being used all over the world. After Janicek perfected the design, he applied for a patent in 1979. A few years later, in 1984, the patent was awarded. Diane says back then her dad sold the sun spotters for about $40 each. Unfortunately lost the patent. He died in 1995 unexpectedly and my mom didn't know about patent law. She never renewed it. So the patent was then acquired by a big tech company. Um, so sometimes my dad's name doesn't get 
mentioned. One of the Sunspotters based on Janus 6 design is displayed in the Air and Space Museum at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Emily Kress, Newswatch 16. Pretty cool. On board the ship, I measured the temperature drop during the eclipse in partnership with the NASA Globe Citizen Science Program. Anyone can measure the temperature drop during an eclipse, whether you experience totality or a partial eclipse, and submit the data online. This allows NASA access to data from all over the world. According to my measurements, the temperature dropped more than 14 degrees on board the ship off the coast of Mexico. On average, temperatures drop between 5 and 15 degrees Fahrenheit. On the day of the eclipse, while most were outside watching, others were working hard on research. Over at the University of Scranton, students examined how this eclipse affected the upper atmosphere. Last year, the university installed this ham radio station, connecting students with people across the country and the world. During the eclipse, transmitted radio waves aren't bent the same way, so signals are often interrupted or intercepted. Research like this is important because if we can understand how radio propagation works, we'd be better suited in cases like an emergency uh, where, you know, uh, processes such as, you know, phone lines or any other electronic communication wouldn't really work. The University of Scranton was one of five chosen as a part of a citizen science project with NASA. Clouds were a common enemy on Eclipse Day. But the first people to experience totality weren't concerned about cloud cover. Coming up, We'll show you the scene on board the Eclipse Cruise. I was on board an Eclipse Cruise for this year's total solar eclipse. Here was my view of totality off the coast of Mexico. 130 miles off the coast of Mazatlan, Mexico, more than 1,400 passengers on board the MS Zondam were some of the first people on the planet to see the moon completely cover the sun. It was the experience of a lifetime. The reactions were visceral. Lots of crying, laughing, and awe. Oh my god, there are no words. It was magnificent. Emotional. Spiritual. Incredible. It was amazing. The diamond ring was the most amazing thing because it was better than the best images I've ever seen. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Yeah, we hit the jackpot. It was totally awesome. Worth the trip. It was gorgeous. I can't wait to do it again. For Chris Benton of New Zealand, this was his fourth eclipse, and he urges everyone to experience its wonder. In one word, surreal. You've got to do it. There's one last thing you do on this planet. It's a total solar eclipse. It's surreal. Mom and I just saw totality. It was amazing. And I think the most amazing part about it is when the sun gets completely covered up. There's one last sliver of light, and then it goes black in the sky. It is just outstanding. And we saw the corona so amazing, the outer atmosphere of the sun. It was one of the most beautiful coronas I've ever seen with streamers extending in every direction. Although we spent nearly four and a half minutes in totality, the experience went by in the blink of an eye. I can't believe that four minutes went by quite so quickly. I mean, four minutes in a soccer match can be an interminable amount of time. <laughs> this was uh, over in a, in a, in a, in a heartbeat. Yeah. Still gives me goosebumps. Clouds thinned enough in Erie just in time for totality. Our Nikki Cries had a front row seat for the total solar eclipse in western Pennsylvania. She shows us the view from Erie. There were a lot of nervous eclipse watchers at Liberty Park, which is right on the shores of Lake Erie. It was cloudy for much of the day, not ideal conditions for the solar eclipse. But as 2 o'clock rolled around, the sun came out and it stayed. At 3.16 p.m., the moment we were all waiting for. <laughs> for 3 minutes and 41 seconds, it got darker and significantly cooler outside. We could see stars and other planets. This was like magic. This is not something that I can ever in my I had tears in my eyes. People were wide eyed and excited. It was incredible. I can't even describe it. I mean, pictures don't do it justice. It was amazing. So really like once in a lifetime experience. It got so cold and then it got so dark and then all of a sudden it was just luminescent. It was beautiful. So I really am glad I'm here. I thought it was so cool. The moon covering up was the sun. Newswatch 16 caught up with some folks from northeastern Pennsylvania. This crew drove from both Music and Pleasant Mount. As it got closer, I realized it's a once in a lifetime event. 
And I just thought, why not? When am I going to get to do this again and with friends? And it's just an experience to have. I was going to come no matter what. Like, <laughs> if everybody else said, no, I don't want to go, I was coming anyway. So, you know, if I just had to sit in the truck somewhere and just... I don't think I'll be able to experience again in my life, so I'm here to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> he wanted to come anyway, so we're coming. Nikki cries, Newswatch 16. Here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania, many people weren't so lucky. Cloud cover hindered the view in Lackawanna County. At Oak Ridge Rehabilitation Center in Taylor, all residents and staff could do was look at the sky and hope for the best. Residents told us breaks in the cloud coverage allowed for brief glimpses of the eclipse. You could see through the clouds, you could see a quarter moon stuff at times, or a quarter sun. Or... We saw a little bit, so we weren't totally disappointed. For Emma Schweers, this was her second eclipse in two different centuries. She saw her first one in 1979. Families came out to Penn State Wilkesbury in Lehman Township to see a partial solar eclipse in the Back Mountain. The chance of clouds didn't stop hundreds of people from showing up with, with hope. Once the sun came out, the crowd cheered until it was quickly covered up by the clouds. Like a, a bright orange moon, a, a crescent. Uh, and it was, uh, that was a great thing to see. Folks in Luzerne County told us they would remember their glimpse of the solar eclipse for years to come. We asked and you delivered. Dozens of viewers showed us their perspective on Eclipse Day. We'll take a look back at your photos next. Pennsylvania proved to be quite the destination during the eclipse. Although corners of the Commonwealth were treated to totality, our viewing area saw between 92 and 99% totality, and you captured each stage of the spectacle. I want to start first in our Valley Cities. I'm going to zoom in on Scranton, where we got several submissions. This one came from Terry from Scranton, right there on Penn Ave. And take a look at the detail in the surface of the moon as it started to cover up the sun. Terry, thanks for sending that one in. This one also from Scranton from Noreen. But notice how the clouds were just so prevalent across central and northeastern Pennsylvania, even in the Valley Cities. All right, let's zoom out and take things a little bit further to the south. Near Carbon County, these came from Weatherly. Look at this, like a time lapse almost between earlier phases of the eclipse and the biggest parts of the partial eclipse here was about 94% coverage there in Carbon County. Let's take things out to central Pennsylvania. This one in Westfield. Look at how much coverage of the sun there is there. Love that. Thank you for sending that one in. And finally, got to end on a great photo that came in from another viewer of ours. I think it's just adorable. This pup was definitely prepared to see the eclipse safely. Thank you for sharing your photos with us. Coming up next, we'll share the story of the eclipse, the eagle, and reveal some upcoming eclipse dates. The total solar eclipse wasn't the only eclipse in the skies. Eclipse the Eagle in the Poconos took a dip on the day of the eclipse. Pocono Wildlife received a call on April 8th about an eagle with an injured wing near the Delaware River. Staff decided to name the eagle Eclipse. The solar eclipse was just on the verge of taking over the sky when she was rescued. When the crew arrived, the eagle tried to fly but fell into the river. Avian specialist Samson Metzger jumped in to rescue the bird from the water. It was like up to my chest. I took two steps and it just dropped. So I had to swim against the current to get up to her. After her wing healed, Eclipse the Eagle was released back to her home along the Delaware River in July. A total solar eclipse won't be visible across the entire United States again until 2045. But if you can't wait until then, the next total solar eclipse is April 12, 2026, visible in parts of Europe. For the U.S., the next eclipse is in 2033, and that'll be visible in Alaska. Then in 2044, an eclipse will dip into the northern plains of Montana and the Dakotas. And for the one in 2045, it will cross the country from California to Florida. That wraps up our look back at the 2024 total solar eclipse. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night.